Well guys, good morning. Today is Thursday, September 1st. Gonna be um recording today's session as I mentioned on my Telegram today. Well actually yesterday. I'm not gonna be on Telegram nor today nor tomorrow. And I'm not gonna make videos except well this one, but I'm not gonna upload them today. So I wanted to take these two days for myself. And also at the same time, we're likely not going to have um, pretty good sessions, right? Because as you can see, well, today we don't really have much. Uh, we do have news at 8.30, but not high impact news. And later at 10, 10 New York, which means that we're likely at that point to, to already be out of the market, right? As, as usual, honestly. So... I wanted to try and record, and the thing is that um, what I want to do with this video is now I'm not interested in getting a, a really good day where I take a profit or anything like that. If I do, then great, of course. I'm not saying that that's not what I want. But as I'm not trading on Founder Challenge this week, um, what I'm going to try and do is just have a session where I can analyze price action and determine the potential direction for the day as well as I can. And based on that, uh, well, just based on that, basically, be able to understand what the market could do, right? And hopefully that will be helpful and a good video pops out of it. So, yes. Um, we had this sell side liquidity here that as you can see was taken through yesterday's price action i made a video on this price action because yesterday was just beautiful as you can see went pretty high up still respecting this high to the left which in my opinion is just short term honestly i do believe this high will be taken i'm not sure if today but um we'll see so we're on Thursdays on Thursday actually. And Thursday tends Thursdays tend to be complicated because they actually turn tend to go against the trend or to do weird stuff. Right? I don't know why, but that's my experience with Thursdays where if we're having a pretty clear direction for the week, Thursday tend to just do whatever it wants. And I'm not sure if that's something that's something, right? Um, but well, just wanted to mention it. Mm, let me. Okay. So basically, what is it that we've had so far? I'm gonna put the midnight price, which we'll use will have only only one minute so it doesn't bother the other charts and gonna make it like more like that yeah so let's go step by step we had this impulse after taking sell side liquidity quite aggressively of course we've taken some buys at above this highs in my opinion um a good amount of liquidity that could cause a retracement i wouldn't think that this could be uh, respected, right? Just retracement, sell side, sorry, buy side, continuation lower now. Could happen, definitely. Just not expecting that to occur. Um, but well, if we wanted to apply, if we want to add you to see where it's equilibrium and everything, we are here, pretty much. Right? Um, I'm watching the... A little bit, not completely. Uh, the um, ICT core content series. And he's using... I'm not going to remember, to be fully honest. I don't believe it was 62 and 7. I used Fibonacci back in the day. <laughs> uh, I don't remember if these were the two levels. As you can see, price has gone pretty high up already. So I wouldn't even mind... Uh, the Fibonacci at this point but my ideal thing here is 
impulse correction run on sell side aggression run on buy side retracement continuation higher run on buy side mitigation of fair value gap on the daily chart right displacement continuation lower in the long term right that's my idea for your dollar for well today next week probably and everything and let's analyze from what we have here um because it looks like pretty complicated price action we don't have much to use uh but actually before we go to the five let's look at the one ignore the block here price has mitigated it look at the displacement on the market shift there's a fair valley gap here i'm gonna call this an order block although ict has complicated ways to look at an order block not complicated ways just ways that i'm 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 uh personally not used to it we also have 15 minute order blocks there um i'm if i can if it's so if i'm here right and i have fair value gaps from here if i can't see it from the 15 or the one hour i'm not really gonna bother because the five minute probably yeah it definitely has fair value gaps and actually a really good one which price just mitigated and has respected the low and even a good amount of this candle right which is a bit of an order block as well um yeah, i just wanted to mention that also we can see how what did we have this is Made nights open, trades a bit lower, so the power of three works out, goes aggressively higher, takes buy side from here, potentially, not potentially, definitely mitigates something from up here. Can we use Fibonacci on this little bit of a range to check the 50%? Just right here. Yep, and it definitely would have worked out. Does it mitigate the. Oh, wow. Mitigates the 15 minute order block just like that. Um, okay, I actually hide the levels from this because we don't want them. Oh, not the levels price. As you can see, this Fibonacci actually works out quite well. We have the 50 here, price taps the 50, mitigates the 15 minute order block as well. Which is cool because it ends up causing all of that, right? Five minute, we can see the clear mitigation on it. Change in direction, tiny fair value gap in here, traded on that. Another fair value gap here with this market shift. Pretty cool. So, what do we have? Midnight ranges, London goes higher. We have this tiny bit of liquidity here, right? So, let's just put it in our charts. Uh, just go to center. So it takes that liquidity, starts going higher aggressively, mitigates that, that causes an aggressive move lower, takes sell side, mitigates a fair value gap. Could this be a move higher to take or to mitigate something or to, as it has taken liquidity, just retrace a bit to then continue lower? Yeah, could be. Could be, could be. At the time, what could have we traded? I mean, if we were trading outside of the times, we could have looked for entries on this. Otherwise, of course, we're not going to be trading because... Uh, um, we are before a Fetty, right? So there's not much that we can really do. This is the Fair Valley Gap. We could have taken advantage of. I could have considered this as the market shift. Can't say for sure if I would have. But six should be enough. And target will be an issue, right? Because uh, in my opinion, this could end up acting just to say like a little, little retracement to then continue lower. Um, because by everything that is being shown by price action right now just shows exactly that that price is just bearish right this reaction to the tick to the 50 percent uh, and also the 50 percent actually maybe this is the range well could be wait because i'm using it backwards 50 percent is 
the same level either way, you know, but I know that, but uh, <laughs> I do want to have it the way that it should. I mean, it's just a tap tire. It misses it, but it doesn't mitigate it, as you can see. But um, it's definitely close. It's definitely close. Um... So I'm guessing, I'm guessing the next. We are at a pretty good spot to buy if we are looking at it like this. 50%, right? One hour order block, one hour uh, fair value gap around here. The five minute does show what we look for, right? We have the market shift on this high. We have clear displacement in two places. We we'll look for the lower time from entry. The lower time from entry occurs, and at the time it'll be working quite all right. Okay, so let's try and conclude a little bit of this pre-market analysis because it's just taking too much time. Right now, the bias is really complicated. In my opinion, we're bullish, and we're going to continue to see a bullish uh, price action because of the fact that we've just taken sell side and we can see immediately how price goes higher. Then we have this. Uh, phase one starts and goes against the trend or what we could expect that's the trend and um and well everything that we just discussed about here and in the meantime that's right we have aggression potential retracement right and then potential continuation at the same time what is it that we trade we trade running stops displacement on the five minute and lower time from entry right and of course at a 30 but uh, I mean, we still have a lot of time for that. Uh, not a lot of time, but we have uh, 50 minutes, 47 minutes maybe. And also we got news today, so we might not be able to trade, but we'll see that uh, later on. Let me actually change this to, to, a, to one of these. Uh, midnight open. So we can see it there and this is nece not necessary at all because the past few weeks you've seen me trade without it uh but i want to start applying the power of three a little bit more because i've seen it as something pretty powerful right pretty powerful and could allow us to to take advantage of many many things we have also a lot of sell side in in here so you can see in the fill in the five and then and in the one minute uh, okay, so bias is complicated. I do believe I kind of want to give it give more importance to the buy side right now because the entire week has been bullish. Um, yesterday we swept a ton of sell side liquidity that was built through Monday and Tuesday. Um, after that. What was I going to say? Oh, uh, we had that impulse, and this just basically looks like a retracement down to a point where price could continue to go higher quite um, quite simply. And um, that is pretty much it. That's why I'm expecting a bullish price. Now, bearish price, of course, we have a um, tiny bit of sell side, of buy side, sorry. In my opinion, we haven't taken too much buy side. We have the fact that this range was the 50% of the range was almost mitigated unless we use the entire thing here, which in my opinion is better. And it also mitigates the 50%, but you can see how the 50 minute order block, which begins here as it is a couple of consecutive candles, is mitigated to a tick, right? Uh, if we were trading into that, if we were in the one minute, we have displacement here, market shift here, this could have been the entry stop, should have been all the way up there, or just expecting this to happen, or just waiting for the trigger to happen to then look for another entry either way would have been fine right um yeah that's pretty much it from me for now i love to see how this the midnight open is kind of acting like like a support right now probably just rejecting it multiple times both sell side and buy side um yeah let me take this off it bothers me Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. Pretty bit, pretty, pretty little pre market analysis. Pretty bit, pretty long market analysis. Pre market analysis. Uh, but I do believe we needed it today. It's gonna be a complicated day. Uh, hopefully the news don't ruin it because this could be a good example of uh, how um, how even without a good bias, 
we can try um we can try and determine the values without uh without an issue. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll be coming back uh either when something cool or interesting happens or just um close to the near couple. Okay, so <clears throat> we've had the open already and I wanted to check what is it that we have to the left that Bryce could react to, but at this point, being completely honest, I would actually expect this load to be taken because, well, I mean, it could respect it, right? Uh, overall, it could. Wouldn't really expect it to, uh, but it definitely could. But the thing is that we've gone pretty low into this entire move, right? Uh, it's the other way around. I mean, we're not that low. We'll see. Uh, thing is that, as you can see, the if we would have taken that by, they would have failed. We had the open being quite aggressively along with the news for sure. Uh, going to the downside, which could be a good indication of the power of three, right? Uh, but again, for now, we're just gonna focus on on the on the. Uh, I don't want to, uh, as I mentioned a couple of times, I don't want to call it the three steps because it's like uh, I used to call uh, my previous strategy the, the, the three steps. They are three steps overall, right? But um, yeah, the the model that we we're looking for, let's call it. Um, now, how can we buy or sell in this market? At the time, there's not much that we can really do, right? Because for me to, to buy, as an example, uh, I would need a price to basically go above this couple of highs, cause a market shift, five minute for value gap, and look for that, right? Because this will be the, the New York open and price going lower first, will be a clear manipulation. And in the meantime, of course, taking some sell side that we have here and here. And, um, well, then the change in direction, right? That's pretty much what we could get. And we even do have a little bit of a one minute entry. That we could take advantage of, but of course, um, again, yeah, gotta be looking for for what what I just mentioned first. Um, besides from that, for me to buy, as an example, what price could do is go aggressively higher, take this highs, aggressively lower, causing a market shift or a market shift create a, in the middle, and fair value gaps in the five minute again, and try to look for those uh, selling opportunities to try and go with what we've had as the trend basically, right? Because uh london was bullish but basically was bullish just to get to a place and then completely change directions just going slightly not slightly but uh slowly lower right um i think that's pretty much it for now honestly there's not much that we could do this is the one minute for relic up that i mentioned as we do have displacement when this the break of this high is taken we could consider this as a um as a good for belly gap to buy from but again this is all based on the one minute so definitely not something that i would like to take advantage of um unless of course we had a five minute to the left close to the left yeah, that's that's really pretty much it for now we'll we'll see what we get in the next few minutes but at the time there's really not much that we can do Price hasn't uh, moved much from the last update. It has, though, well, mitigated this fair value gap right in, in the lower time frames and created a fair value gap in one minute, along with a pretty good displacement that we could use as an entry. I'll take this on paper trading, but this is not a trade that I would uh, take advantage of on a funded or challenge scenario. And that'll be because of multiple reasons, to be fully honest. We're pretty low. We don't really have much to aim for. Um, it's just multiple reasons why I wouldn't take this. And um, just like that. Yeah, just wanted to mention that, basically. We haven't had any clear run on buy side liquidity, run on sell side liquidity with market shift and displacement. We have had nothing of that, nothing of that sort. And um, pretty much a boring session so far. I mean, this is all of the price action that we've had. And um, overall, really, really not much to do. Really not much to do. Have we taken London's load? Yeah, we took it years ago. 
Okay. Just wanted to see if we had taken London's lower already or not. Uh, but yeah, that is that is all. We'll see if we're actually mitigated on this and if it causes something at all. Um, I'd be interested to see what happen. Interested to see what happens below this low, when this low is taken. Um, that's what I want to see. What happens afterwards? Well, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. I mean, price is definitely bearish at the time, by breaking multiple structures to the downside. Um, it's just that we would need <clears throat> a little bit of a retracement to continue to go lower. Hopefully, that takes some kind of uh, buy side liquidity before continuing lower. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, this I do believe I mentioned this. As we've had a little bit of an aggression here, we could consider that this five minute verbal gap is something that we could trade, right? And um, while, uh, while I do believe that, at the same time, we do have the fact that a little bit of a high has been taken. And price is or has shown a little bit of aggression that could cause the, the five minute market shift. Which, if it did, could allow us to um, look for opportunities within this five minute verbal gap. Right, uh, buying wise, again, we do have the opportunity from this fair belly gap, but in my opinion, we are very against the trend. We haven't swapped any kind of lows, so we just can't buy from that point. Right, could it work? Definitely, definitely could work. It's just not something that I'd be interested in participating on, right? Uh, because this will be trying to catch a bottom, and it's like trying to catch a falling knife. Uh, and now that I realize, we also have a 50 minute fair belly gap here. So more and more confluences to sell. So you have five minute, 15 minute per volley gap, run on buy side liquidity, displacement on the five minute potential market shift that would allow that could allow us to uh, sell from this theoretical fair volley gap that has yet to be created, of course, but um definitely close to it. So just wanted to mention this that well we definitely do have a bearish opportunity in the next in, potentially in the next few minutes. And if that were to happen, then great. I mean, we are still pretty low. Ideally, we would see something a little bit more uh, aggressive or a little bit deeper of a, of a retracement into this move to then see this, to then see a round of buy side liquidity, fair value gap in the five minute to then try and sell from. We definitely have the market shift, so this is definitely going to be interesting. We're now potentially seeing a retracement to get into this to then look for the selling opportunities, right? For now, that is really very much it. We'll see how things turn out in the next few minutes. Hey guys, so um, had to leave the house for for a couple of things, and I saw this going on on my phone and decided to take advantage of it. And if we look in this chart, actually, we have this little bit of a fair value gap on the five minute. The price mitigates on this, causes a pretty aggressive move down, and that's basically where I sold. Right, this is where I sold, although the, the entry was triggered a little bit higher for spreads or just, uh, I don't know. Oh, well, it was a market execution, so yeah, definitely maybe trigger a bit later than, than supposed. And targeting-wise, haven't really checked it, but definitely going to go below the slope. It's not a really good restore war ratio. Uh, and based and due to the risk to reward ratio, this is something that I would have not taken a challenge. I do believe we have everything that we look for in a trade. It's just that the risk to reward ratio would have been complicated. And we are a bit late into the day. I mean, this was triggered 9.30. So 30 minutes before the session closes. Well, not the session closes. The kill zone closes. So that would have been a bit difficult, but um, definitely doable. And we basically have the, the run and stops. The five minute market shift with fair value gap, right? Price trades inside that fair value gap, and um, this is where the one minute entry shows up, right? Does go pretty high up, right? But if not, but if not, like seeing it going that high up, but as you can see, the, the fair value gap is respected with the bodies. And aggressive move lower, ton of bit of a retracement, aggressive move lower. Uh, price could respect this, maybe doesn't. I don't know. If it doesn't, then it's likely to just completely fail, in my opinion, if this high is taken. Although it could be taken as liquidity to then fail. Uh, to then, sorry, continue lower. And I do believe I risked, yeah, I definitely risked much more than supposed. 
as I was on the phone, I didn't know what to put and I just put 2 million um, units, I think it's cool. Uh, yeah, that'd be pretty much it. Um, we never really got anything clear. Again, this is something that we could take on a challenge for funded. It's just as it happens um, this close to what we could call the target, which is just going for yesterday's low, I believe. Yeah, definitely. I do have... I wanted to have another chart for um, for stuff like that. And yeah, previous day's low is that. So we are heading into that. And it would have been a nice target. But again, complicated uh, trigger in this case, which makes it uh, a pain in the ass. Yeah, we'll see if it works out. Um, pretty boring session overall. I mean, price just went lower. When I realized it was going aggressively lower, we could say that uh, we were a little bit more aggressive on our entry as price could easily just uh, continue to go lower without much of a retracement. But again, that's not an ideal scenario for us. We want to see retracement. We want to see buy side liquidity being taken if we want to be selling uh, to then stuff like this to happen, right? Because as an example, if this got a, would have gone up to the five minute for valley gap, it would have been a much better uh, situation to be in, right? At least from my point of view, Getting into this fair valley gap up here would have been great, right? Would have been great. And um, a best case, best case scenario, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave the video here for now. I might come back later to make the resume of the day if it works out well. Otherwise, this is probably not something that uh, I'll be sharing. Because, again, it was a little bit of a bit boring session. Um, but it might have been with a pretty good analysis overall because we were able to, to at least take advantage of one move. We could have avoided a loss. I would have avoided a loss, at least on Challenge Fund, that I would have taken this uh, buy that we got up here. Um, oh, we actually didn't get the buy. No, no, we didn't get the buy here. Um, yeah, that's, oh, this is the, the sell that we discussed. Yeah, this is the, the, the loss that I took on paper trading. But again, it's not a loss or a sell that I would have taken on Challenge or a funded account. Because it's just price mitigating a 5 minute for balance gap. And as you can see, it, it ends up acting as liquidity for a 15 minute for balance gap to, to later come in and save the day, basically. Right. And um, yeah, that is pretty much it for now. I'm going to go do stuff around the house. And where's the. I'm just going to leave an alert on this to know the previous day low has been taken. Pretty good target, in my opinion, to go for previous day slow or, or high, depending on uh, context. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll be coming back later on. Okay, so getting back into the charts now, we can see how price will dropped uh, at exactly 10. Oh, we had news at 10. Right. Okay. Well, cool. Um, could have been a much better target. Uh, selling from this point. Stop this was. Don't remember. Round 90, I think. Don't remember. Could have peaked at 9.25, 9.55, 57. That would have been peak. Uh, going for a specific target. Um, I mean, I could go for the sell side down there. Uh, it's just really not worth it. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, definitely tops would have been 5R, being fully honest. I don't think I would have gone further than that. Price, as you can see, ranged a bit, which is expected when we have news coming. And it truly is what it is. And what's a pretty good trade? I mean, as I mentioned, this could have been a trade to take on challenge that I personally would have, would have taken on challenge funded. But risk to reward ratio was not good, in my opinion. As farthest, further, furthest, furthest point that I would have come for would have been this low. So previous day's low, which again, as I mentioned, was 2.32R, right? At least I want to get 5, uh, sorry, 4R at the very minimum to take a trade and today this trade would have not really allowed that and besides from that it was a very boring session honestly i mean news did speed things up right uh it could have been a very good trade by going for six seven r something like that but um we didn't really have anything to the left to 
uh, how can we say this to to base that target off of right so even if i wanted to get 5r at the very least we didn't really have much to to aim at unless again we would have gone for an example something like the the lows that we left around these levels right which would have not been hit yet and as it is quite far and we wouldn't really we we weren't really expecting something as aggressive as this was it would have been a very difficult target to get into so really good trade let's show the the execution labels and stuff this is the the cell we discussed earlier and as you can see price me why is it showing like that okay entry on that right there trigger out on below this low right tiny bit below that low and that is really pretty much it on the account it was more than 2.2 percent due to the due to the fact that i risked much more than supposed i was risking like a five percent i think so i got like 15 percent yeah 15 percent approximately uh but yeah overall a cool trade again if this exact pattern would have worked out on an area where we could have gotten a better risk to reward ratio this would have been a tree that i would have taken without any kind of issues uh but as the risk to reward ratio wasn't the greatest uh it's just really not worth it so i do believe this is pretty much what i'll be doing hold on because i messed up uh on this video i wouldn't really i mean what can i really explain about this except for what we've discussed this move higher doesn't really take much liquidity, but oh, oh, actually, actually something that I wanted to mention. <clears throat> so we had the sell side on this point, right? On um, this couple of lows here, where I swapped that went higher aggressively. We have some buy side liquidity, in my opinion. We didn't have enough to, to call it as equal as this, right? But we did have this couple of equal highs. Price takes that and then changes the direction completely the market shift on the one hour happens on the displacement here uh price mitigates we even have the one a one hour order block right there the price mitigates as well um we can clearly see the displacement when causing that market shift on the breaking of this low pretty beautiful price action overall and understandably so right again i was expecting a bullish day we didn't get the confluences for that we got confluences to sell we took advantage of that which is in my opinion this is actually a pretty good example as i mentioned earlier where we don't have a clear bias but we can still take advantage of the day based on what price gives us right simple as that and um yeah the trade is a shame that we could have not taken advantage of this on, on a funder a challenge scenario um due to the risk or war ratio but it is what it is and overall a pretty good opportunity that could likely continue to go lower of course i'm not going to be traded anymore and it's also well, 10 30. uh look at how but by, by 10 we would have been into a trade and the news just completely went in our favor also if we would have been on this trade on a challenge or funded five minutes five minutes before the trade i'm probably closing the the trade because it's going to go it could go as aggressive as to just skip my stop list or skip my stop list and then trigger me out here maybe taking four or five times what i was looking for um as a stop loss or as a risk right which is really not not worth it right not worth it lose a challenge or a funded account just like that in literally a stupid new right so yeah uh overall a pretty cool pretty cool day right uh difficult due to the fact that price didn't really retrace that much it was just going straight down as we were able to see except on a uh, little bit of free new york and phase one which price really just ranged and mitigated fair valley gaps up there not much more than that really happened um but yeah that's pretty much it so pretty cool session hope you enjoyed the video hope this is I don't know worth for you to try and understand a little bit of how i try to determine my bias and we i really do like the fact that the example or the setup worked out as usual um i was watching an, an ict um class i think it was yesterday i do believe that he said that we needed to have a a a pattern or a uh, like a sketch 
we, we should be able to draw exactly what we look for to try and explain an, ex an exchanger, a stranger, uh, how we trade, right? Or what is it that we look for? Of course, the stranger is not going to understand much, but if you draw it, um, the stranger could understand something. I would like to use Epic Pen, but I don't have it currently. I think I'm having issues with my computer. Uh, but basically, for me, it would be something like this. We have um, price is just going lower. Let's go for that first. Price is going lower, so we understand that the bias is just bearish, right? And what I what I look for is for price to take a high. If we're going bearish, of course, displace lower with the creation of a uh, market uh, with a market ship, yeah, displacement. And in here, I'm looking for the fair value gaps, right? So run on liquidity on this. Fair Valley Gaps, of course, after the market shift. Fair Valley Gaps in here. That's where, in the lower time frame, I'm going to be looking for my entry, right? So we have this, and then the lower time frame, we basically have the same area. Price trace into this, and we basically look for the exact same thing. Maybe a run on buy side liquidity or sell side liquidity for buying. I don't really look for that um, in the lower time frame, but it tends to happen either way. So after that we get after that we get a little bit of a market shift and exactly the same in there that's what i'm looking for my fair value gaps right that's the way that i like to explain the concept and basically exactly what happened today we have the high which would have been this high is taken as liquidity then we see the displacement we have the fair value gap which is in here this is the five minute fair value gap right if we go into this that's the five minute fair value gap right there right which is again inside this um this range where we can look for the fair value gap price trace into that and then we get the exact same pattern with a tiny run on buy side market shift with huge displacement and the entry lovely trade lovely pattern um exactly what we look for sadly again as i mentioned this would have been avoided on a thunder challenge uh due to the fact that it's a pretty low risk to reward ratio i would have not gone for a 2.4 uh, 1 to a 2.4 um, but definitely would have worked out and could have gone farther even uh, than what would have been my target, right? So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope this video was of help. Hope you learned something and I'll be seeing you on to the next one.